Whoever said that cheaters never prosper clearly never played video games, because video game cheaters prosper like traders on the Silk Road in the 18th century. And now that I've said something educational, we qualify for that sweet educational grant money. We don't? Man, cheating is hard. Unless, that is, you've got a powerful cheat code, in which case cheating is as easy as pressing a few buttons, then sitting back and enjoying the illicit rewards. Speaking of which, here are the seven game-changing cheat codes that most changed our lives for the better. Nearly everybody knows the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. And if you didn't know the Konami code, now you do. And also the origin of about 75% of YouTube gaming channel names. This iconic cheat code first appeared in Konami space shooter Gradius on the NES, in which entering the code gave you a fully powered up ship. <laughs> From there, the code gained widespread popularity in Contra, where it gave you 30 lives, and therefore, a chance of actually finishing this tremendously tough game. It is hard to overstate just how much more pleasant playing Contra was with this cheat. The game normally only gave you three continues, with four lives per continue. That meant you had to beat an 8 level game in which you could be killed by a single bullet with only 12 lives. Something we couldn't manage even with the twitchy reflexes and limitless free time of a child. But 30 lives actually gave you a chance of seeing the end of Contra, so the grateful gaming community took the Konami code, as it became known, to heart. Developers snuck the influential code into a bunch of other Konami games, such as the Castlevania, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Dance Dance Revolution series. Thanks to the ubiquity of the code, many young nerds who grew up to be developers, writers and web designers went on to hide it in their own projects. As a result, the Konami code is now a Siri Easter egg and a Deftones song, features in the movie Wreck-It Ralph and incredibly works when entered into the Bank of Canada website about the new $10 bill. Even more important than that, if you can believe it, is how to this day the Konami code persists in many a Konami game. For this we are still extremely grateful, except for in Silent Hill 3 where it makes the character Douglas appear in his underwear. I'm a detective. A detective? Really? Well nice talking to you. Correct reaction, Heather. As hard as it is to believe, in the past some games didn't have checkpoints or let you save. And some of them were about animals wearing sneakers. The past is weird, is basically what I'm saying. One game that combined all of these weird things was Sonic the Hedgehog, the legendary Sega platformer about a rad blue hedgehog who had got to go fast but could not save his progress. The problem being, Sonic the Hedgehog levels were full of sharp spikes, bad robots and bottomless pits. And though Sonic could run faster than sound itself, he couldn't outrun death. Add to that how Sonic gave you a measly three lives to start with, and the fact that there was no checkpointing, and you'll see why kids playing Sonic in the early 90s spent a lot of time in first level Green Hill Zone. Once you did graduate to the less green levels, the only way you could stop playing and carry on later was to leave your console switched on, then hope that while you were away doing the Macarena or collecting pogs or whatever people did in the 90s, no one switched your console off, wiping all your progress. Truly, it was the hardest period in human history to have to live through. That's what made the level select cheat in Sonic the Hedgehog so life-changing. On the title screen, if you pressed up, down, left, right, then A and start together, you were given a glorious page of Sonic levels to choose from. It's like a delicious menu where you want to eat everything, but also skip straight to dessert. This cheat code gave players access to the remaining half of the game they owned, but never got to see because of robot wasps or because they had to go and do their homework since apparently maths was more important than the Robotnik threat. If that's true, then why can I remember the Sonic level select cheat and not my multiplication tables? Tell me that. If 
you ever played genre-defining first-person shooter Doom, you'll know that 95% of it is things trying to kill you. The other 5% is you running along walls trying to find secret passages. In the story of Doom, you play as a space marine who finds themselves in hell and has to kill everything there in order to, I guess, show hell who's boss? I don't know, it wasn't very big on story. <laughs> The point is, you're fighting all sorts of horrible hell demons, some of which are giant mechanical spiders, or whatever the hell this thing is, and as such, you spend a lot of time running, circle strafing, finding cover, or straight up retreating when things get a bit much. There is another way to play Doom, however, and that is with the use of the God Mode cheat code. Entering IDDQD in the game's command prompt activated God Mode, as indicated by your character's pupils turning white, just like God's when he's playing Doom, I imagine. With God Mode activated, you take no damage from anything, and all of a sudden, the monsters that seemed so intimidating a second ago are fodder for your glorious cavalcade of carnage. Especially if you combine the invulnerability cheat with the Give Me All the Weapons cheat. Some people will say that using the God Mode and Weapons cheats is the wrong way to play Doom, to which I will say yes, but check out this sweet chainsaw rampage. God Mode was so popular that after this point it became a standard cheat in first-person shooters. Or at least in the first-person shooters where the developers could spell properly. Looking at you, Rise of the Triad, with your dog mode. Thank <laughs> There are two kinds of people in this world. People who have used The Sims money cheat and people who say they haven't. The Sims is a game series that simulates real life with a handful of signature quirks like the gibberish language Simlish or adults wetting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I only wet myself when I watched Hereditary, and every night since. This simulacrum of modern life includes gainful employment, in which your sims must work hard to make money and further their careers. Only hang on, Will Wright, there's a glitch in your simulation, because doing work makes your sims sad and tired. That can't be right. Oh no, wait, no, that does work out. So thank Sims God for the Sims money cheat, with which you can acquire great wadges of cash without sadness or fatigue turning your green diamond red. Every Sims game has concealed a sneaky cheat for fast money, where you enter a word like motherload or ka-ching as many times as you like to stack that paper. <laughs> this code performs a kind of cheaty alchemy that transforms the Sims from an everyday grind of honest work, trying to save up for the good barbecue grill, into a fantasy mansion builder where your sims can live like slobs because servants will clear away your mouldy dishes. So convenient! <sighs> Once you've cheated for money and no luxury barbecue is beyond your reach, there's no looking back. Because the only thing more irresistible than the sims money cheat is bricking them all up and seeing who loses their mind first in a grim social experiment. Will it be Ellen? And how are you going to afford all those science bricks without cheats? Backbreaking labour? I don't think so. Oh, Obi-Tay! The doing Oakley! 1993 basketball arcade game NBA Jam arrived in a real mainstream cultural moment for the sport of basketball. And with the era-defining Space Jam three years away, how else were you going to get your jam on? As a result, NBA Jam was a bigger hit than the one taken by the Cavaliers when LeBron left for LA. See? I know basketball. Old LeBron James. Favourite player. NBA Jam's real gift to gaming was its pioneering work in the realm of hilariously sized heads, which is to say, it had the very first big head mode. Bradley, one minute to go. Jam for, win. for the uninitiated and unintuitive, a big head mode is a mode in which people's heads are big. And that's it. You access this mode by holding up and the turbo button and the steal button until the tip-off. Right open, please! 
The bigness of player heads confers no particular tactical advantage here unless you were very short-sighted or standing several feet from the arcade cabinet and pressing the buttons with broomsticks. But it did forever change the way we look at games and head sizes. So influential was NBA Jam that big head mode persists to this day, turning Lara Croft here, for instance, into a high-fidelity bobblehead. Wow, I hope that's the worst thing I see happen to Lara Croft today. All right, next up we have Jane talking about... Oh, no. Some common childhood experiences leave an indelible mark on a young psyche, like losing a childhood pet or finding out where babies come from. Or for a certain generation of Tomb Raider players, seeing Lara explode. Is it done? Yes. Good. You see, both Tomb Raiders 2 and 3 were programmed with cheats that let you skip levels or gave you all the weapons. These cheats were activated with a series of prescribed in-game steps and turns and jumps that looked like Lara learning a one-woman line dance. Sounds great, you thought. I want all the weapons, you thought. There's no chance I'll accidentally turn my video game idol into an exploding shower of low-poly body parts, you thought. You thought wrong! <laughs> Is it done again? Yes. Good. If you flubbed the cheat code by failing to equip the right items at the same time, then you were punished with Lara's explosive expiration for being an impertinent chancer. In a way conceptually similar to, and nearly as psychically scarring as, the bit at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark where the guy's face melts off. Which we're not going to show you because we're not that cruel. Also, we don't have the rights. The other way you might have made Lara go kablamo was by intentionally entering this code because you'd heard it made Lara's clothes come off, which I suppose it does, along with her legs and arms and head. All right, that's enough. I've got to go re-repress some stuff. There are so many iconic James Bond moments, like that time he ski jumped off a mountain and pulled his parachute and then got exploded by a rocket. Or that time that Goldfinger said, no Mr Bond, I expect you to die, and then blew him up with a rocket. At least that's what those moments would have looked like if Goldeneye's unique enemy rockets cheat had been activated at the time. In one of the rare cases of a cheat actually making the game harder, enemy rockets place the rocket launcher in the hands of even the lowliest enemies in the game. That's the least qualified person in charge of a rocket since, well, since my New Year's firework display. Only three casualties this year. Having played Goldeneye on N64 until the analog stick went all crunchy, the addition of the enemy rockets cheat added extra longevity and a new, unique challenge. A direct rocket hit can be an instant kill, but even if you avoid totally eating a rocket, Goldeneye's explosions tend to linger, causing additional fire damage. The benefit is that if you can just defeat the very first enemy in the game in the first 30 seconds, you'll be able to pick up a rocket launcher of your own, making this the Olympic sprint of arms races. Only with more running away, somehow? Completing even a single level with enemy rockets activated is challenging enough on account of how everything is constantly exploding. So it's a welcome break when you eventually get to the climactic cradle level and discover that the only enemy who's been given a rocket launcher in that level is Boromir actor and Goldeneye final boss, Sean Bean. Yeah, I would complain, but I've seen how many times Sean Bean gets killed in movies. That guy needs all the help he can get. Those were the video game cheats that changed our lives for the better by making games easier or making us unkillable or having loads of weapons or just made a cool sound or something. And if you press up, up, left, right, down, up, B, A, A, B, B and start on this video, guess what? Nothing happens. But if you click on this video up here, you get a nice video from us, which is about the ways the games disguise their loading screen. If you click down here, you get a video from Outside Extra 
which is about the pieces of video game music that we still can't get out of our heads because they're so good. So either of those better than any cheat code, I would say. Except the Konami code, that one's good.